So I figured maybe we'll do some hearthstone, some card stuff. I don't think I've done much with cards, so we will do some of that. We're going to probably need some cards. I'm going to have to make something. Okay, well, I am not an artist yet, but we're working on it. So we have a card. And if you buy packs from the store, like card packs, which is probably what you do, you're going to end up having uh, most likely like a card base and then like the, the fill in stuff. So I've actually made a few of them. Uh, not a great deal, but a few. So the first thing we're going to want to do is let's create a folder for this stuff and call it and put a bunch of zeros so it's at the top. All right, well, pretty close to the top anyways. So I'm going to move the stuff that I have here into that folder so I do not lose it. There we go. And I am going to take my card template I made here. And all this really is, is we have our outline. I have the image here. Um, and then I have some text mesh pro, uh, values. Well, let's just put that back. Uh, I wasn't hundred percent sure really how I'd want to set that up. So I don't know. I don't know if I'll use this one for now. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> if you guys have an idea what would be good for a, a third number, uh, m maybe that's just the cost. I don't know. And then the description, the name, and then I've also got glow effect. So we have a card template. And I'm going to prefab that. And while I'm 
add it, I'm going to put its, I should have done that on the prefab. Always have your prefabs at position zeros. It will save you in the future. So the first thing we're going to need is a manager. We need to know every card possible. So we have a board. The, the thing, like I said, no, we're going to need a, a manager. But we're going to need um, a proxy. And we could actually, we could use a hash table or we could use an array list. Maybe we'll use a hash table. And if, you, if you've never used hash tables, I mean, they're, they're really easy to use. And if you're doing something like this, we'll probably use a lot of them. So, I'm trying to think of a hash table is going to be the best bet. Um, yeah, yeah well, we'll try it. I mean, if, if need be, we'll change it after. So, we're going to call this all cards. And we're going to hit the prefill data. And we have. Um, I guess these would be, I guess this would, uh, try to think, because we need multiple lists. So the keys are always a string. Three, four, we have four. Right. <clears throat> so for example, we'll have cat. Goblin Troll and Dragon. So, <clears throat> um, and that's the name. So, I guess what we would need would be an integer. <coughs> and we need a few more hash table proxies. Let's do, let's change this one to card cost. Card uh, attack. And let's do card health. So those will obviously be integers as well. We'll prefill those. Now, I mean, like you, we could do like a spreadsheet or something. This is just a nice, easy way. So the key, though, the key is I'm going to use the key, the same key in all the tables. Right. So now we can turn around and be like, okay, well, how much does the cat cost? He's going to, we'll say one, maybe the goblin's a two, the troll's a three, and we'll say the dragon's a six. Sure. Um, do, do, do. You know what? Let's go like something like that, and the health. Let's go two, one, four, and six. I don't know. <clears throat> Set them up any way you want. So, this essentially is all our stats. We do need actually one more hash table because there is another difference between all the cards. Is the sprite. You can call it icon, you can call it image, graphic, whatever you want to call it. But it is a sprite. And again, I'm going to use that same key for all of them and then we have okay there's our troll the crazy cat the goblin and the dragon 
<coughs> there we go. So, let's just shrink these down so we can see this stuff, but don't need to see the data. And the manager, very important, get owner, because this thing needs to be accessed by everything. So he's going to be a global. We're going to call it the card manager. So, if let's let's bring the card out for a minute and in the card let's give this a FSM I apparently messed that up there we go and we'll call this set card so what is it what is this card this is going to be a string um, we can just put it in the input there it is so on the start all we have to do is hash table get um, we're gonna get a few of those we're not gonna use the get many because we're using different hash tables so we're gonna use the manager though card manager Let's go over here. So we need the card cost, card attack, card health, and we also need, of course, our sprite. So the key is going to be our card on all of them. Alright, <clears throat> and type, and this one is an integer, and this is the, we'll just call this cost, and this guy is the attack, which is also an integer, so we'll just call it attack. Nice plain and simple int we'll call this one health and the sprite is the type we do not have a type here so because we don't have a type we're going to use object now we can select the object type so object type is going to be unity engine and sprite and the result is our card sprite there we go so we have that and once we have our data so this is our data collection we now need to set the data so in the card itself we are going to use variables we have our graphics so let's pull that in and we have our attack and that is attack Let's separate these. Let's call it UI attack. Might as well keep this the same. UI graphic. Pull the health in. UI health. Uh, defense. We'll we'll call that our cost. And oh, we need name and description. So, uh, UI description and UI name. So, that also means we need on our board one more hash table. 
because we need a card description. And as you can tell, we uh, as much data as you want to put in here, you put in here, it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> we just keep adding a hash table for each type. Right? So, again, cat, goblin, troll. And this is just a lot easier than having, you know, 400 prefabs in a list, I think, anyways. So there we have. So cat is some crazy cat. Simple, normal, angry goblin. Big, ugly troll. Fire breathing menace. So in the data collection, we do need to get one more hash table get then. Because we need from the manager and the key is still card. This is a type string and the result will be our description. So what do we want to do? We need to UI sprite. We need to set a sprite. And we need our text meshes, because we got a whole whack of those. Make sure you are using the UGI basic. If you're using the basic, that's not that's not these things. That's a, it's a different different thing. So, set text mesh pro UGI text. Let's get a few of those happening. All right. So, we need to set we want the, we need the attack and that's going to be attack. We need to set the cost. And that of course will be the cost. I mean, as you can tell, we're, we're literally just filling things out. Uh, da, da, da. So, okay, description. We must just go in order here. Description. We're going to convert that one. Uh, the graphic needs to be the card sprite. Oh. Wait, no. That's that's not right. And graphic isn't a isn't a text mesh pro thing. Not at all. The health is convert health and we need one more, I think. So let's stuff that in here. We need the name, that'll be the card. Um, the sprite, which that's the graphic, and that will be this guy. So, notice how it's not coming up, and that's because this is an object. Let's change this one over to a sprite. Card sprite, which, make sure it's still in here, though. Um, card sprite there we go <clears throat> just the way they kind of alter things All right so there we go now everything is good so uh, this card for now I'm going to apply that to our prefab so if I turn this card off and we say okay you are the cat and we hit play card itself should now autofill itself with that data that's from the manager right if we turn that cat on and I don't know where he is uh, I guess it would help if he was you know a child to the canvas but there he is right so he's cat some crazy cat and he's got his data 
right? And if we try that again, I actually prefab them this or put them under there, and we call them the dragon. We should see something completely different, right? So we just have more or less a name on the FSM. And it goes to the manager and it finds that and builds everything up. Now I've got this, everything's got kind of this blur to it, and that's because I forgot to, on all these, turn on no point. We'll turn that off. <clears throat> A little clearer then. So our card template is working in that aspect. Perfect. So, I'll show you. We can still use that out here, I suppose. Uh, what's one of the other things we're going to need? So we, we don't want the cars to actually set themselves um, like this, though. I actually want to make sure I'm doing it by an event, just so that we're in control. And all I'm going to do is I'm just pulling it off at the start. And I'll go, I'll maybe just throw a next frame event in there. Just like that. So when I, when I create it, um, it does this. I think the other thing that we should probably do is, uh, I don't know where my card is. Is to look at the card. We we also need to be able to flip the card because uh, you can't you can't always see the. I didn't build a graphic for that though, so I'm just going to build a panel. Just kind of give it a color, I suppose, right? <clears throat> so this will be the backside. Alright, so that's there. Because now we can we can just toggle that on and off if we want to flip the card. Right? Show the card or hide the card. Normally that would be a graphic though. Maybe I'll make something later. Alright, so the other thing we're, we're gonna need is we're gonna want to be able to move the card. Uh, not all the time though. So let's a add that to the prefab go into the prefab and let's add a new variable let's say it is bool we'll just call it in play all right <clears throat> so we're going to add some states here and i'm going to go to these ui events and this is we're going to use a few of these a we want to use on pointer enter and we'll add a on pointer exit so the first thing we want to do is we don't necessarily want the glow to happen or maybe you do uh, we could also alter the sizing too so let's let's do a bool test And if in play is false, then we'll continue. If it's true, then we're not going to do anything. Um, so, all right. So if if it's if we're doing stuff though, let's just activate. Or glow and I can drag it in because that's the way it works all right there it is and on exit we're gonna do the opposite we're just gonna deactivate the glow uh, dun, dun, dun. we could also like I said then we could also scale it too if we wanted to um, interpolate I suppose I could do a vector to interpolate I'm 
vector three, I should say, um, because we could sense scale every frame. So the interplate, uh, we can do linear, we ease in and out. Um, we're going to go from our original scale of say one, and we'll go say like 1.3 half a second so that is going to be our scale set scale to scale every frame get rid of that and then if that's the case though then we, we're going to need to go and interplate it down after but we don't want to interplate it with solid numbers because that will because if we don't go to state 5, then we've never scaled it. But if we leave it and we haven't scaled it, we're at scale of 1, but now we're going to go the opposite and go to 1.3 to 1. So it's going to pop it up to 1.3 and then scale down. We don't necessarily want that. So we're just going to use our variable of scale. And I'm going to default scale to 1. So if we're at a 1, we're going to scale from 1 to 1. Nothing's really going to happen. You'll never see it. But if we have gone, and scale has changed, then we will go down. So the other thing we're going to want is we want UI event uh, begin drag and uh, do, 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 drag actually you know what I don't even know if we need that in play so we can turn off the raycast uh, we'll deal with that later so when we begin drag so these get called automatically Right, so when you use these global transitions, right, you have your custom ones. That's the ones that we make. They don't do anything unless we tell them to. You have system ones and UI events. These are automatic. These will get called through Playmaker for us, which gets called through Unity for us. So these are special. These are all special. And some of them have some data in them that we can pull out. So on begin drag, we can, for example, get pointer data UI get last pointer data and we can say get uh, da, 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 the position is that a vector 3? No, it's vector 2 so this is mouse position start should I call that start oh, mouse position so there is a starting mouse position. Now why do we get that? <clears throat> well, get position 2D. Move this to the bottom. We're going to get position of our card start position. So now we have those two positions. We can now do a vector to operator. And we're going to take the mouse and the card and subtract them. And we're going to create a offset. So now, during the drag, we're going to do a vector to operator. And we need a get pointer. That same thing. And we need a set position 2d so during the drag a we want to get uh, the mouse current position and then we want to take the current position and the offset we're going to add them and that is our card 
new position and space world card new position none of these have to be every frame because this gets called kind of every time it gets moved we might have to flop those around but so let's see what that looks like let's save and let's hit play so we have a little bit of an issue with the scaling and of course the card Why is my card white? Oh, I never gave it a... Never gave it one of those. Okay. So, now, that offset, this is what the offset does. If I click in the corner, I'm clicking and I'm holding. Notice how the card's not moving. And now apparently the card just disappeared because we're fucking magical. Um, so let's fix that. Hey, let's, let's just put a name into that thing so we don't screw that up again. And... So... Our pointer exit, we're going from a scale from 1 to 1. And on enter, we're going from scale to 1.3. I'm going to use a variable there. All right, now this card, I don't want it down in the corner because that's weird. It's sitting down there. Now let's move this up here. I want this camera. I am going to go to orthographic. Well, I guess it's not going to matter for the UI, is it? All right, so and because we have, let's go to a solid color background. So when we're leaving, it's not scaling back down. So let's see what that's doing because that should be you know what I never set the scale Lord tundering how did I forget something like that right 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 all right so let's a let's just apply that first go into it and some reason not forget about actually setting the scale now let's go check our offset and make sure that's working good right so there's the card right we go in scaling now if I click on it I should be able to okay, it's adding a big crazy offset so let's go into that again and we got those positions we subtract them I think I'm supposed to subtract those two on the drag portion. All 
No, because that puts us there. Why is it being difficult today? Why? Why? Mouse cart position. New cart position. Well, it should be. Well, for now, let's just go. I'll show, I'll show you what this looks like. The thing is, it snaps. Right. Um, like it, like it looks normal. I can move it, but if I say click on a corner. See how it snaps over to the middle? Right, and that's that's what we don't want. <clears throat> so that's where getting its position here. And you know what? I should probably move that position up there because we're trying to totally screw with the positions if they're not in order bad things happen right all right oh and of course you know the other thing we got to do is actually set this back on so set position to the new card position just save that yeah order order matters order is such a huge thing uh, just swapping the order can change your logic so dramatically, right? So see how it went to the opposite corner? Okay, so now we just got to um, It's actually in this one so we are Subtracting those Adding or subtracting those I don't know why my card so small at the start is weird. It's got sitting like that. All right, but yeah, see now it's like if we go in the corner, I grab the corner, start moving, but I'm now moving it by the corner. Right, it's not snapping, and that's important because it it looks funny when it snaps. Let's put that back up there. Now, from there, when you're holding it, you can actually slowly lerp it back to the middle. I'm not too worried about that portion, though. All right, so there is our card. Now, let's save that. How long is this video been going on for? 30. Oh, Lord Tundering. So, I think we should probably call it good on this. And we'll have to do, we'll do it, well, obviously, we'll have to do more videos. Still tons left to do. So... We have a card, the card gets set. We have our manager that holds the data. We can move cards around. So now we, after this, we're gonna have to obviously build uh, the hands and the playable areas. <clears throat> and then from there, start uh, looking at the actual logic to how the game runs. But I think, yeah, with the next one, we'll be working on setting up the boards, setting up the hands. All right, talk to you guys later.